same thing over and over. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel like the exact opposite. Like, um, <laughs> I, I've literally, like, when I was a kid, what I would do was I would just watch the exact same movies again and again and again. Um, like, I watched... I would do the same thing, but only because we didn't have TV channels, so it was just the same three DVDs. Oh, no, I, I wanted to do it. I had other options. It was just, like... I literally would just watch like Aladdin or the Spongebob movie or like you know just these random kids films I would watch them like ten times in a day I would watch these movies hundreds of times because there was something that felt kind of nice about the monotony of just doing it again and again and I, I feel kind of the same way about CSGO because it always feels like I'm progressing in a sense but at the same time, you are literally doing a lot of the same tasks. So the goal of the game is to just do the same tasks again and again, while also learning how to do them in a better and more efficient fashion. So that's what I really like about the game, is that like I am a, the type of person that can just do the same thing over and over again. I actually prefer to do that, is that I really like monotony, um, because I'm <laughs> autistic. <laughs> For me, it depends a lot, though. Because, like, in one of my work experience things, I had to spend the whole day shredding shit. And, like, that is the definition of monotony. But I didn't necessarily mind it myself. Because my mind was just wandering the whole time. Hmm. But, like, with stuff like CSGO, like, I, I, I got... I, I played, like, a stupid amount of hours for me. I played, like, 30 hours in a week. And then I'm just completely burnt out on it. It feels like a chore. A chore. Chore. Fuck. I can't pronounce words. My voice is weird today. I think it's probably because I didn't sleep. I think it's probably because you're Irish. Yeah, that adds to a bit. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I I don't know. Like, it's interesting to me that you mentioned shredding and like manual labor and stuff like that, because, like, that's one of those things where I've wanted to be able to do it. You know, it's one of those things where it's like oh, you know, get a job is what you're supposed to do, you know, get a routine, but, like, I'm, I just feel totally uninterested in anything that would have to do with working a normal job, um, and, like, the reason I can play CSGO again and again isn't because, you know, it isn't because it's one of these things that, like, that, that's just as monotonous as a job it feels like it's like an aesthetic and a form of gameplay that I can really connect with on an individual level and so because that element is there like I'm gonna want to do it again and again but that's how I feel about stuff that I'm passionate about like when it's something that I don't care about like work or school or something I will just refuse to do it like like my body will physically hurt if I'm forced to do something that I don't want to do because like, I don't want to do it. It's, so it's... wait, did you buy that suit for nothing? Uh, I didn't buy a suit. Did you... Was it not you who bought the suit? Or are we mixing you up with someone else? I think you're making, mixing me up with someone else, because I, I talked about wanting to get a suit, but I, I never actually got one. You're going to do the Review Bro Summer 2019 collection. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to become the new Review Bro, but for anime. <laughs> you show up at, like, KFC restaurant, like a CV that's just, like, a, a list of all the people on Discord you've dated, and it's like, <laughs> look at me, I've got experience. <laughs> yes, yes. These uh, are some uh, peak, uh, I think it's half seven. <laughs> Listen, man. Yeah, it's hard to eat. This peak kind of Kieran has hasn't slept and is being stupid, but not not sleep deprived. No, it's it's like they have on the sleep they, deprived I've been in my life. Sorry. They have they have on the questionnaire like, do you have experience with children? And then I go, oh yeah, lots and lots of experience. <laughs> 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 just, just, that, 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 I I don't know why I find that so funny. <laughs> But like, uh, I'm not even that sleep deprived. Like the most sleep deprived I've been in my life was uh, when I was in Dublin airport with a TY trip. Like, again, I, I I don't think I texted that many people during it because I was with friends and shit. But like, 
I was dead, basically. Like, I was peak sleep deprived. De deprived. Even though, like, it wasn't that bad. Like, I was completely, like, dead in the airport. I think it was kind of anxiety and energy being used up. But, uh, it was fear bad getting through security, and then I got food. It was okay to a certain degree. Like, we were in the Burger King, right? And you know those machi machines they have in the Burger King where you can get the drink yourself, right? Yeah. You know how you push the thing down to get the ice, right? Yeah. I accidentally pushed down the whole thing, got like a full, like, like a, like a full, like, you know those things, they, a full cup of ice, right? Then I had to pour it out and then pour it into Coke after. That was like the third thing of Coke I drank, I think, because I was trying to stay awake, because I felt like I was crashing. And the anxiety as well of being in an airport and shit. And then I then I fell asleep for like ten minutes on the plane and was grand for the next day. So like, nothing makes sense. World is a fuck. Um, I I yeah like, I I feel like especially with like, going out um and getting on planes or getting on the tube as they would call it, um you know, like, it that's one of those things for me that I just intrinsically don't understand because you have to do it at, at daytime and it's like I don't want to be awake at daytime I like my entire well life, I mean technically I, we showed up the airport at like two in the morning and then we were then the plane left at like seven so it was an all nighter so well okay like that like that I would be into but but like most of the time it's like they they take off in the day you have to go to these giant ass fucking airports with all of these losers and like when I'm outside in a crowd, I'm just thinking about how I hate all of these people, how I want nothing to do with them, how they all have stupid lives, and um, they don't they don't understand anything. Like that's the thoughts that are going through my head. I hate listening to their conversations. I hate seeing their existence. It just makes me feel agitated. And so by the time like I'm the polar opposite. If I hear if I overhear people having a spicy conversation, that makes my day. I love overhearing just the dumbest shite off people. I mean, that's because you're a normal guy, but me, I am this diasma <laughs> of strangeness and misanthropy. So, like, you know, I'm I'm ten years in a room type of guy. Like, it, so when I go out, I'm just like, man, if we could have genocide, I would do it right away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're just there outside, you're like, uh, guys... Armenian genocide wasn't real, but I wish it was after hearing <laughs> that conversation. Yeah, no, the Khmer Rouge didn't ever happen, but if it did, I would support it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would go full tanky with that. I would become a Pol Pot supporter. <laughs> I, I, I just love it, though, because it's, it's just so dramatic. And it's, it's also very funny how I've unintentionally like, carved a niche out online where I'm considered quote unquote normal, even though like in reality I'm the opposite of that. Yeah, well, it's just. I think you're the quintessential weird normie. Like you're the normie who has unconventional interests. Who maybe they write or they'll drink alcohol every now and again. You know, a real fringe guy within the normie paradigm. But like for people, I like mean, it me, wouldn't even fit the normie paradigm though. Well, I I think you do. I don't, but um. Like, because the thing is, is that, like, it's, normie is a spectrum, so you're on, like, the super weird end, like, you're the weird normie, and then, like, on the other end, you'd have the super normal normie who's, like, having sex all the time and plays sports or something like that, and then, like, me, I'm just not on the normie scale at all, like, I'm in a totally different category of people, um, and so like it's weird though because like with both groups i don't really feel much of anything in common with and like socially neither groups really talk to me that much so it's a bit weird like yeah like going on yubo and talking to normal people i will feel so out of place doing that but then i'll like go on our nk or something out of morbid curiosity and i'd like uh feel different but like not different enough you know it's like a concerning level of difference I, I should be more different from them. I, I think I think the, the real difference here between like you and me is that you actually try to go on Yobo. Like you actually try to seek these people out. You may not relate to them, 
you may have totally different interests, a totally different worldview, but at your core, like, you want to see these people. Like, like you were complaining earlier today about how do you guys spend so much time in your room? I already hate this. And it's like, of course you do. You want to spend time with people, whereas we don't, you know? Um, and I think that's a natural state of mind to be in. Like, that's a very natural way to think. It doesn't mean that, like, just because you are more extroverted than someone like me, that your weird interests don't exist. It just means that you're on the normie scale. You're just on the very weird side of it, you know? Like, I, I think even a lot of people on R9K are on the normie scale. They're just failed as normies. And even then, it feels like a kind of the line between norm or whatever, or and uh, what what's a non normie called again? I don't remember this terminology. Sorry, a doomer or an autist? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of it feels like the only difference is is like like it just means oh, someone who enjoys these specific things I do online. Hmm. I've always defined normie as people who want to be socially outgoing or who are socially outgoing like people who actively seek out lots of social relationships and want to talk to people a lot that's how I've always defined normie it's, it's, it's such a weird thing though cause like again like I don't necessarily fit either group like you know <laughs> Yeah, because like in the eyes of the average person in my class or something, I am weird. But then in the lens of someone who does stuff, I I don't find the internet distractions good enough, so I don't count. Yeah, it's kind of that's the problem with broad categorizations is that they can never truly account for all individuals. So that's why I like the like using the term spectrum a lot, because like. Like, I would consider you on the normie spectrum. It's just that you're on the very weird end, you know? You're not, like... Like, the people in your class, they're either going to be in the middle or they're going to be on the far end. Whereas, like, you know, someone like you, you're going to be more on, like, the very weird end. But you still have the same desires as those guys, kind of. It's just that, you know, you're very different than them. That's, that's the problem I have with broad categories, is that they really don't account for things like that. They just kind of say, okay, this thing is one way. When human beings are very nuanced, so it's, it's kind of difficult to just say, like, you are one way or the other. You kind of have to account for all kinds of different people, you know? This is going to sound really, really harsh, but, like, while you're going on about that, I was just thinking about uh, these two lads in our year who... Uh they actually have autism and shit mm. and like <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have to find a way to explain this without coming off as an arsehole so like uh, there are two of them Ty, uh, Ty is, a, is like a 10 year old who plays Fortnite but like 16 <laughs> and he, he's an innocent he's an innocent soul who did nothing wrong except that one time at the hotel where he stole like 7 loaves of bread Oh my god. <laughs> and the other lad, this is the main character. I want to talk about him a bit, because I've been thinking about him lately. It's weird. His name is, like, Philip, right? He's this, like, absolutely tall, seven-foot, like, uh, lad with a full-on beard and, like, really greasy hair. Like, as in, once we saw him, like, take, like, a large bug out of his hair and squish it with his fingers. And, like... He used to kind of hover around me and uh, one of my mutuals from school, Troy. We were on this retreat thing, and none of our other friends showed up that day. So he just kind of hovered around us, and it was it was a really weird experience to a degree. Because like I was like in my head, people see me as the same as this person, even though. And I was like, wait a second, we're kind of similar in these really weird ways, and it freaked me out. Like we were at this retreat, sorry. Hmm. Like, at this retreat thing, we were doing this activity where we had to, like, uh, write out what we wanted to do with our lives. And Phil and Philip wrote down screenwriter. And I don't know why, but something about that said, oh, this person's doing the same thing as I'm doing, even though and people see me in the same light as him. Are we similar? Are we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, like... This is probably the weird... 
It, yeah, like like. I might I, have to clarify that on the train. I'm gonna type that out better. I I mean I I get I get the essence of what you're saying overall is that like, I I think um there is definitely like a link between weird people and autists that can be really uncanny, like where the weird guy is interested in the same things but they don't think the same way. And then the autist is interested in the same things, but it's because they think a different way. And so you have this really, like, uncanny feeling where it's like, am I autistic? When it's like, you're not. It's just that, you know, you guys align on certain things, you know? As it, I used to go, oh, I'm the Diet Coke version of Philip. And, like, at times <laughs> that feels accurate, because, like, People see me more like. Oh no! You cut out. Like what? I shit. I'm not sure that's at all. I'll try it now. But still, uh, what was I saying? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Diet Coke Philip. Like it's really weird to a degree that like. Kind of when when I'm online, everyone's like, "Oh, oh, here on you, Normie, etc., etc." Then when I'm like offline, I'm like Philip, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I. Oh, I... oh, oh! I forgot to say on the last day of school, Philip started ranting to me about SJW using video games, and it was really <laughs> funny. <laughs> They're taking Cause... away our female characters. Re? He was actually saying stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my fucking And that it was so funny because, like, that was the day I went to the house party. So the contrast between what I spent my last break of school doing and what I spent the last night of that year doing. Dude, gamers are like the most reactionary fucking people in the world. It's. I don't like how I've been playing a lot of games to escape things. I don't like that. I don't like being a gamer. I don't. I don't enjoy it. Like I've been playing Earth lately. And I've played like six hours, so no, seven hours into my stay of fun. And even then, I just, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like, like being a gamer, basically. <laughs> even on the train today, I found anger. I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's just because, um, you prefer human beings in general. Whereas, it's like it's like that image from Lane, like you aren't needed in the real world. That's how I feel when I play video games. <laughs> Cause like I I do enjoy it. I just don't like the whole thing attached to it. You know, I don't mm. like the person. That, I don't like the gamer stereotype. Basically, I'm just insecure I... about that. Probably. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like. I mean, I've never really cared because I think all, like, all labels are inherently reductivist. Like, the fact that you apply yourself to the label of gamer is inherently going to carry the baggage of what people think about gamers, which is reducing the individual to a group, you know, which individuals are never small enough to just be their group. And so I really don't like labels because of that. But the reason I continue to use the, the label of, you know, gamer or video game player um, is always because I try to give the respect to people enough to assume that they won't group me in that box. Where, like, I think if anyone is ever your friend, they're not going to group you in a box of saying, like, you're going to be like all of these other people because that's my experience with them or that's how I see them. Um, I think most people will give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you're not like insanely reactionary or anything like that just because you like video games. Like liking video games is a fairly normal thing to do, it's just that on online circles people are more critical towards them because it's funny, you know? It just kind of depends on the context and how you play a game. But Hopping in Fortnite with the boys, that's normal, but like if you're playing titty games on your PSB, they get out of here, man. <laughs> hey man, I do that. I literally do that. That's the thing. Dude, I sent you that video where it's like one of those type of games for like the PSV app, but there was like an error on the box printing, so it was rated E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you haven't shown me that, but that sounds woke as hell. But no, I I, I'm a I big... actually lost it laughing looking at it. I, I'm a big fan. 
I'm a big because I had the e, it had the e sign, and then right beside it said sexual content. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, I mean, that, e for everyone. That's the way it should be, man. I have to have my gang of children. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like I'm a big fan of this game called Dead or Alive Extreme Volleyball. Um, where it... Oh, um, no! Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know about this game, okay. Mm. I know about it through Mega64 memes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's actually an unironically really good game. Like, like it's not about looking at, like, the, the sexualized images of it. I don't give a fuck about any of that. I just think it's a really fun video game. Um, you want the asexual version of Metal Gear Solid Beach game. Also, yes, I did make some Metal Gear Solid and uh, Dead or Alive. I I'm gonna justify it by saying I'm sleep deprived, but I don't feel that tired. <laughs> I'm just like walking ar around the yard right now. It's really nice though. There's a bunch I... of birds and shit. I, I bought a copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 last month, and like at the beginning of May, I, I bought Metal Gear Solid 2 when I got paid by Patreon, and I haven't even touched the game because I know the game is gonna be really fucking long. And it's just easier for me to play, like, Borderlands 2 on my computer or something, which is, you know, fairly short by comparison. Where, like, I know the game is going to be, like, 40 or 30 hours. And, like, I used to be able to do that with games where if something was 30 hours, I was like, bring it on, I have nothing better to do, I need something to do. Whereas now, like, I'll play a game for a few hours and then I'll get bored and I'll want to play something else. And so I kind of miss that ability to just, like, entrench myself in one single game. Like, what I did w when I was a kid. You know, when I was younger, I would I could just play games constantly. I would wake up, play Skyrim, and then go to sleep. I just did that every single day. And I was able to do that through a profound sense of immersion in the experience. And it feels like now, no matter what I play, I don't seem to get that. And I kind of miss the feeling. I, when I was a kid, I just played Wii Sports like a real man. It's a great mm. game. I was playing like Wii Sports. I was playing like shooters for adults and shit when I was a kid. My parents did not care. They just allowed me to play whatever. Well, I I played Wii Sports, so like get on my level. <laughs> get on my level. level. See, them in that game. This is what I I'm was saying. fighting mass in that boxing game. I was going wild. This is what I'm saying, man. You were a normie. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird though because like when I think about it I didn't have a friend at all until like secondary school like I was the token artist basically in my primary school yeah I, I mean I think people a lot of people with unconventional interests are that way like a lot of people there's this kind of more prevalent theory going on on the internet now that like autism is like a joke and it's not like actually real that you can only separate people in terms of like people who society determines to be autist and then people who just aren't and like like um like digibro his he had this like 20 minute video where he gets out a chart and basically explains that people who like anime are autistic <laughs> Wait, is not the one I used to make jokes about? Yeah, yeah. Because I just saw a thumbnail and I ripped into it for months on end. Because, like, <laughs> he had to go into some shop and buy a whiteboard. And they're like, oh, what are you using it for? And he's like, uh, I'm going to make a video for an edgy 13 year old to show that they have autism. <laughs> yeah, like, in, in the video, he's he's making all of these really pseudo scientific claims about autism. And, um, basically, like, his point is that anime fans are autistic. Like, they're just autistic if you like anime. And it's really funny. <laughs> he basically just took a point that someone would make on an edgy YouTube video from, like, three years back. But he's, like, doing it without a shred of irony, and I respect <laughs> that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, It's it's weird to me, because, like... Like, I don't really understand people who um, tend to complain a lot about boredom, is that, like, if you're bored, just drink alcohol. Like, the amount of boredom that you have can only be, like, in parity to the amount of alcohol that you have, you know, if you can't easily get it in your house. 
then obviously you're gonna be bored. But it's like, if you just drink alcohol and play video games all the time, who cares? This is terrible advice, by the way. <laughs> this is how someone turns alcohol. <laughs> Something going wrong in your life, hit the cans. <laughs> But that's unironic. I'm a guidance counselor, like. I'm the new guidance counselor in this school. Oh, you want to do journalism? Hit the cans and play Skyrim for 40 hours. <laughs> it's unironically how I feel, though. That's the thing. You may have heard of your kids hitting the whoa. New problem sweeping across England. Kids <laughs> hitting the cans. <laughs> kids hitting the cans. Too hot to <laughs> that sounds. That sounds like the name of like a really bad kid show. It's like an art. Or like how, a music. How Brexit is leading to kids hitting the cans. <laughs> 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 so yeah, the house party. That wasn't even a proper house party, and that's probably the highlight of my year. It was very funny though, because like, I spent half. The time is like, okay, I have to explain another person in my year now. Uh, okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> I sound like such an arsehole doing this, by the way. I, I know, but like, uh, there's this lad in our year called Dermot, right? Mm -hmm. You there? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm just listening. Okay, so, so, so Dermot is basically the kind of like, uh, you know, that kind of fails normy trope. Yeah. He's like the definition of that. He like he orbits around all the really popular people that are here. And he's so inept and no one likes him. Like everyone's kinda of making fun of him behind his back, but he never notices and he never <laughs> cares. And he just doesn't give a shit. It's amazing. And uh when he was at the party, right? <laughs> he had <laughs> half a can of orchard teas, took a hit off the the vape and it was fucking full on dancing the whole like a stereotype way. <laughs> what someone would do if they were forced at gunpoint to dance and they've never seen dancing before or people or like. I don't even know how to describe it. Like when I've explained this to other friends, I can like physically do the dance to explain it, but I can't now. It's like this. I don't know how to describe it. You know, it's like he took half. Huh, can and one hit off of vape and he was happy for the whole night and I spent the whole night going to my friends. I'm never going to be as happy as dear it is after that hit of a vape. Mm. Are you there? That, that is no, that is a very wholesome story. Um Oh yeah, I forgot to add the best detail. On the last day we were all in the whole mech we're cleaning up plates and shit, getting out of class. And he keeps on going to us, oh I got I struck up a deal with Jamie. Jamie's basically our year. And it's like, oh, I struck up a deal with Jamie. I'm going to get two fags for five. You know, you know <laughs> fags are cigarettes, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone spent the whole day bollocking him for that. Because, like, for... <laughs> Fag for three. <laughs> Secondly, he was genuinely so happy about it. It's just... <laughs> I'm, the, the power level of this man is unbridled in the tomes of history. Yeah, like... This uh, guy. Imagine if an internet... No, 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 I think I have it, I think I have it. You know that uh, Twitch streamer, Chad Won? No, I've never heard of him. No, wait, you know that one Twitch streamer? No, I can't remember his name. Lol Tyler or something. Yeah, I don't watch Twitch streams. Thanks. So you need to fill me in here. I'm trying to find the way to describe this person, but like, imagine if someone was like, they had the uh, social awareness of an internet office, but they didn't have the weird personality. And they had that utter lack of self-awareness of an internet office. It's great. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that just seems like all of Twitch streamers. Like, it's all these really, like, weird autistic people who, like, want to be normies, so... Yeah. They use the platform of Twitch to become normies in in the um in the eye of nerds. Like all of the nerds will, or really, it's just kids at this point. They'll just watch Twitch streams all day. And the type of people who become Twitch streamers are almost always like failed normie types. 
Uh, I wouldn't start talking shite until you start your Fortnite stream. <laughs> I, yeah, I should become... Remember that one time you were high or something, you're like, dude, we should do a Fortnite stream. That was the funniest <laughs> shit. I don't remember that, but that does sound like peak performance. Uh, I, I, I remember I was laughing at him, and I was like, is he serious? <laughs> I, I think I might have actually been serious, that's the thing. I feel like most other friends, like, they're like, their memorial stories are like, oh, remember that one time we got pissed at an airport where you're like, remember that one time you said you said you'd stream Fortnite? That's funny. <laughs> Unironically, I, I kind of still want to do it. I don't know if Fortnite is on Linux or not. That's the thing. Maybe I should post sudo apt-get uh, Fortnite. Let's do it. <laughs> That's what I've been texting my ex-wife the last four months. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is some peak ASAM riffing here. Yeah. Let me see. Sudo apt get install Fortnite. Let's see if it works. I want Fortnite and Marquez Brownlee. Here we go. <laughs> but yeah, try to think some other Dear Madone stories, because he's a character. He's Oh yeah, oh yeah, on the Italy trip he wore these sunglasses the whole time, and me and my friend Sean, like, I start going to him, it just me or does Dear Madone, like, act completely different with the sunglasses on? <laughs> because, like, he's always kind of dirty without them on, like, on at normal, around school and shit. But when he has the sunglasses on, since you can't see the eyes, his weird movements kind of, they become robot-esque, kind of like uh, the Terminator. <laughs> so I have this rolling joke with my friend where whenever we see Dermot, I whisper in his ear, here comes the Terminator. Then I go, da 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 It's like, it's the way he moved and shit, exactly like the Terminator from, uh, <laughs> you've seen that movie, right? Yeah, of course, I've seen all of them. <laughs> like, it was Arnold's more it was really funny and then we just had like this extended joke where we were like a Terminator movie it was great <laughs> <laughs> see it's it's stuff like that that I feel like are kind of unforgettable when you think about like experiences with IRL friends like I think it's the little moments like that that always make it worthwhile you know if you can find people who you really vibe with and then you can just make fun of each other it's the best thing it's kind of annoying though, cause like organizing shite with friends, it's such it's I, I'm so scared to do anything. I'm scared to be outright yo, Danny Fox wanna hang out, cause like that sounds desperate. Mm. And like with a lot of friendship shit, it's like it's stuff that's formed over time, and I've kind of intruded in on it to a degree. And I don't like that. It's weird. Yeah, it kind of plays that thing where I'm like, think of I'm it. too normie for the internet people, and I'm too internet person for the normies. I'm not like the other girls. <laughs> I'm not like the other girls. Oh no, think of it this way, right? I'm male, I'm British. I'm male, I'm British. Yeah, no, Brexit. Brexit is the real reason you don't fit I'm into I'm Brexit. <laughs> I'm not like the other girls, I'm Brexit. Yeah, but, but no, like, like, if you think about it this way, those people would not be spending time with you if they didn't like you as a human being, or at least appreciate you in some way. The majority of people will just not talk to you if they don't have interest in speaking to you. And so, like, the idea that you're somehow dragging them down by asking to talk to them, um, I think is, is kind of unhealthy because if someone wants to talk to you, they'll say yes, or if they don't want to talk to you, or if they're too busy, they'll say no. Like, it isn't like, um, something... Cause, like... Hmm? Cause, like... A lot, of me, a lot of the way you talk to them kind of stem from the fact that I basically just kind of showed up one day. Like on trips and shit, I would just kind of come up and talk to them because I would felt like more comfortable with them as well. So there is that kind of weird feeling of being kind of forcing myself into it. Because like when I got added to the group chat, I asked specifically before I got added, which felt kind of weird. Like they were talking about adding me in the days before, but I didn't like... I don't know, it just feels kind of weird, you know? I mean, you probably don't, don't know, considering you enjoy it. I'm holding a conversation here, like... 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm too autistic to handle this, man. I'm too autistic to understand uh to understand the depths of your norminess. Absolutely disgusting. Get on my level. I haven't taken a shower in one month. Ooh. Oh god. I hate people who are like that. Cuz like I just uh, people on R and K and stuff who don't shower for weeks or months or whatever that shit. That's just like bad for your self image, even. Mm. I mean, I I the reason I, I don't the reason I don't I, tend to shower right is is because I just don't shave. I don't feel the need to. That's the thing, is that like. I, I just will wake up and I won't want to take a shower and then I won't take a shower because it's like I'm not dating anyone so why would I need to stay clean if I if if I were to stay clean it would be to have sex or something you know <laughs> the Chad's guy to hygiene <laughs> it's like for me it's, it's like just kind of like, if I don't, like, wash my hair every day, I'll look at myself in the mirror and be like, wow, I look like a freak. I should do something about that. But then again, it's very easy for me to, like, spiral, like, uh, with my skin and stuff. Like, I'll miss one day, then I'll break out, and then I feel the futility of it, and then I kind of fall out with the habit again of, like, the whole skincare routine and shit. I'm rambling, really. No, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I think that, again, I think that's a very, like, normal stance to have, like, like, when I was little, I used to never brush my teeth, I hated brushing my teeth, and to be honest, I'm still the same way, but the way that I mitigated that was that I always, um, use mouthwash every single day, so most of the mouthwash, like, I have really powerful mouthwash, so it'll, like, clean up most Is of Is it like the mouthwash you could drink and die on? Yeah, um, and so... Hello. And, and so, like, most of the time, my my uh, teeth will get clean, even though I don't brush them, because I just use the mouthwash. But, like, most people aren't going to want to do that, because it seems like a really fringe and strange idea. Like, when someone hears that, they go, oh, you just use mouthwash? What the hell? Like, I think that's the difference between, like, the doomer and the normie mindset. I do things because I want to do them. I don't... And I mean, normies do the same thing, but, like, I'm, like, extreme about it, where it's like, I don't want to participate in this society, I just won't. And everyone looks at me and goes, what the hell, how can you do that? And I'm like, I don't want to do it, so that's why. Um, and, and so, like, to most people, it looks really peculiar, because they think, like, the reason these rules are in place is because these rules are good. Whereas my mindset is that rules are meant to be broken. If you have a problem with the rules, you shouldn't follow them, you know? Yeah, it's kind of weird, though, because, like, one of the weird side effects of, like, letting the internet melt my brain, basically, for years on end is, like, kind of, like, doing things, but normally it feels like a lot of kind of weird effort. Like, a lot of weird effort goes into things. Like, a uh, good example of that was uh, when I was uh, updating my u profile this week, I had to take new pictures of myself because I literally could not stand looking at the old ones. And, like, the process of, like, being in a picture or taking a picture, that is completely foreign to me. Because for, like, the longest, like, period of my life, like, four or five years, I refused to do it. I refused to look at myself in photos. I'd refuse to. I'd, I wouldn't look at myself in pictures. I wouldn't take them. I felt weird, foreign, kind of. So, like, with my selfies and stuff, I know they're forced, and I look horrific in them. And I'm behind, and whenever I'm in a group photo, I do look out of place. It's not something I'm comfortable with yet. It's weird. I'm not sure why I'm rambling. Mm. No, you're fine, man. Um, I, but, yeah, like, like I, I, I feel a similar way, is that there are just these very normal things that most people would do, that if I'm forced to do them, I just won't know how to. Or, like... Like what you said with um, taking selfies and stuff, like that's a concept that I've never known how to do. Like everyone around me would be taking selfies and I just never do it. Um, because like, I have this like pouch thing I do on nearly every single selfie. Oh yeah, like, yeah, 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 you do. And it, it looks, it. I mean there's an aesthetic to it, it I guess it's unique, but it, it's it, not, it's because it's, it's I, because like taking selfies makes me feel like shite, like a, 
It took me half an hour to get my Yubo pictures, and even then I'm not really happy with them. And I was looping the one song over and over to intentionally annoy myself into getting the damn thing over with. It was a good song though, Road Sweatshirt. 